Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new to this channel, I'm a third year medical student here at University of Otago. So, a lot of people are asking whether if Auckland or Otago has better medical school, and beforehand I also made a um, comparison video that was like two years ago. So after two years of experiences in med school, after talking to a lot more people, I would like to make a remake. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So today mainly I just want to compare five aspects, five key aspects of these two medical schools. So first is the pre-med. This is your first year option here in New Zealand. You need to take a pre-medicine course and from this year of study, they're going to compare your result, may or may not have interview, and then they select you into second year, which is the actual medical school. So in Otago, you can choose eight papers or seven papers, seven core papers, which are hubs, the human body system, one and two. So that's two separate papers. One is going to happen in the first half of the year, and the other one is going to happen in the second half. And then you're going to have physics and chemistry, and then biochemistry cells, which is uh, things like cellular system, basically a biology paper, and also pop health. And your eighth paper is a selective, and this selective can be anything. It can be things like stats, it can be psychology, it can be Maori, it can be classics, etc. Whatever you want, and there's a whole list that you can choose from. There's about 16 to 20 options over there, so a very wide range. But at Auckland, it's slightly different because you get two preliminary courses to get into medicine. So versus in Otago, you only get to do health science first year. So at Auckland, you get to do something called a Bachelor of Health Science. And in this uh, pathway, you get to do four core papers, which is chemistry, bioscience, medical science, and population health. And beyond that, you're also going to do uh, three other papers, which includes um, another population health paper, a health psychology paper, and another population health paper. And the other pathway you can get into it is a Bachelor of Medical Science, which uh, includes chemistry, bioscience, uh, medical science, and pop health, which is the same as the Bachelor of Health Science. But beyond that, you're going to have papers that's uniquely uh, to, the bio, uh, to the Bachelor of Medical Science degree, which is uh, to bioscience paper and a physics paper. And for both of these pathways, you also get to do one extra selective paper. So basically, the idea of having the selective paper is for you to gain a little bit of your own flavor from this degree. Instead of just being like everyone else, you get to explore your own interest a little bit more. Alright, so after talking about the preliminary courses, which is uh, different but essentially the same, we are going to talk about the selection process which is how they are going to combine all your results together and decide whether you can get a spot in the medical school or not. So usually, regardless of which university that you're going to, Otago or Auckland, you're going to have a graduate pathway uh, and a uh, first year pathway. So first year pathway is when you, when you just finish your first year of study and uh, they're going to decide whether you can get into it or not, which is usually the most competitive pathway and graduate pathway is also quite hectic, but that's a different story for another day. So for the selection process of the first year category, um, in Auckland, what they're going to do is they're going to split it into three sections. They're going to look at your GPA, they're going to look at uh, your UCAT, which is a extra exam that you need to take. It's sort of like a uh, intellectual test, but you can practice and definitely train for it. And the third section is what they call a MMI, basically it's a multiple mini interview. The percentage of uh, each of these sections, they have 60% for your GPA, which is the biggest chunk, the most important, and 15% for UCAT and 25% uh, for the interview. The idea of the interview uh, covers a lot of aspect, and there's a whole list uh, uh, of what they want to focus on on the website of Auckland Uni. But in summary, okay, basically what they're looking for is um, a decent level of communication. So they want to see if you have good oral English skills, if you have good structure uh, to your communication, if you can convey your ideas and understand the questions appropriately. Other aspects they're going to be looking at are your dedication to medicine. If you are um, driven uh, to uh, pursue your academic career to 
basically work hard and accept challenges and aim for self improvement. And third, uh, th third things they're looking for is high social IQ. They want you to be empathetic. They want you to have the ability of read uh, to read the social environment, uh, to care about other people around you, and. Uh, last but not the least is for you to have certain open-mindedness that you're open and aware of um, the ethnicity issues and at a target it's slightly different what they're looking at is purely your GPA from the eight papers or the seven papers they're gonna average it out and they're gonna uh, country school so for the past few years it's been sitting around somewhere between 93 to 94 percent so you need to get that kind of grade to get into it and on the side they also have a UCAT but instead of actually taking a uh, certain percentage as a combined result what they're going to do is they set a threshold for UCAT every year and uh, the threshold is um, not clear every single year but I definitely know people who have had amazing result um, on their on their GPA on their on their school aspect, their uni aspect of things, they're getting 96, 97 percent. But because of their UK the sub threshold, they weren't able to make it into medicine. And the next thing I want to talk about is the tuition fee. So both schools have um, very similar tuition fee. Auckland is sixteen thousand four hundred thirty six dollars per year, and Otago is sixteen thousand four hundred sixty two. So that's thirty dollars difference per year. And if that's one of your concern, you should probably be concerned about yourself. <laughs> It's the one and only Eagle Double G. And the next one I'm talking about is the highlight of the program. So basically the strength of um, each medical school is different. And when I was doing research on this, I actually found we have a lot of things in common. So basically in Auckland, in third years, they um, have this chunk that's going on uh, next to their science uh, medical education. Basically they call it the medical humanities, basically. I assume, I mean, I'm, I'm not in Auckland University, is about how you interact with the community and your uh, capacity seeing things beyond the science. And basically here in Otago we have a similar thing going on. We have something called a community contact week in 30. Basically we're going to have a week spending our time in a different town and just experience sort of the rural aspect of the community. And also we need to undertake a six week course of a humanity paper and that can be very diverse so some people are doing world politics some people are doing classics some people are doing dancing and personally i'm doing improvisation which is a form of acting and it has been very interesting and very engaging for me and in uh, otago i think this is specifically specifically for us um in our fourth year four to sixth year we get to do a placement in our fourth year you get to make a choice to Finish the rest of your uh, medical career, your medical study, not the career, your your study career. You get to choose between Christchurch, Wellington, and uh, Dunedin. So definitely a perk because you do care to get to choose a different city and just have a have a different vibe of you. You know, just being living Dunedin for way too long. Uh, but it can also be a problem because. Um, if you want to stay in Dunedin, they don't necessarily have a spot. There's around like a hundred spot in Christchurch, hundred spot in Wellington, ninety spot in Dunedin. So it's not like you always get what you want. And uh, what's usually happening the previous years is that a lot of people want to go to Christchurch, but because there's limited spot in Christchurch, they have to get relocated to Wellington. In Otago and Auckland, in your fifth year, you get to do a year long regional rural program which has very limited spots but it is an option if you're interested in being like a rural GP or something a rural doctor. In Auckland you get to do a eight week elective. Basically they send you overseas and experience uh, their healthcare system for eight weeks if you want in your final year and at a Otago I think it's six weeks so two weeks shorter but similar uh, similar idea. Uh, the thing is because of COVID they have um, called a pause on it so basically it's not available at the moment but because the border is opening up so we might see some changes in the next few years and hopefully by the time I am a TIE, I'm a six year 
will get to do it. And、um, something you also get to do in Auckland is an eleven-week research project in your sixth year that you can carry out. And in Otago, the research opportunity can happen either after third year or after fifth year. And basically, what you can do is after third year, you can take a pause and like, okay, I'm gonna take a break from the medical school. You can, of course, you can choose to t-、uh, do a gap year or、uh, some other sort of degree. But also, you can choose to do a, a research paper, and you're gonna end up with having another bachelor degree called BMed Sci. So it's quite worth it because you're only spending one extra year and you're getting a whole bachelor degree out of it. And also, you can choose after that bachelor research degree, you can also choose to carry that out. Into a PhD degree by doing another extra year after that, and also carry out、uh, research part time in your fifth and sixth year. And another strength or perk at Otago is that we actually get、um, actual cadavers. So if you don't know what a cadaver is, basically it's a corpse of human body. So we do get donation from people who passed away for us to learn the structure of the body. If that's something you're looking forward to. Uh, it's definitely a something to consider, and also Otago carry out all their dissection on the cadavers in a very respectful way. At the beginning of the year, they're、uh, having this entire ritual、um, to take care of the spiritual need of certain medical students, and also、um, for the reverence,、uh, the respect、uh, to the dead bodies. And also at the end of the dissection, we're gonna assemble all the parts back together, put it back into the body bag, and I do believe、um, the body will be sent back to the family、um, for the burial at the end of、um, the dissection section. And、uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the international international ranking. So most people probably don't even care about it because it's absolutely unnecessary、uh, in regards of medical school because New Zealand New Zealand healthcare system they Always prioritize their own graduate. They want people who,、um, who completed their medical degree, and、uh, in, uh, in New Zealand, it's not like if you graduated from the Harbour Medical School, you're gonna have an edge over the local medical school. The,、um, the local medical school is always gonna be prioritized because it is taught in the way that's best accustomed to the system over here and the culture over here. But just for your own information, if there's something you want to know, Auckland is ranked at ninety seven in the latest twenty twenty two Q S subject ranking in health and medicine, and Otago is ranked at a hundred. So that's three places different, and it's completely unnecessary because it oscillates every single year. Sometimes Otago comes a little bit on top, and sometimes Auckland comes a little bit on top. But basically, regardless of which school you go to, you're gonna be equally good as a doctor by the end of your graduation. And things to really consider about is more about what kind of experience that you want to get out of it. And so that's everything I want to talk about today. And if you find this video helpful, please hit the like button and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Peace.